Hi, I'm Stuart Ball and welcome to this lesson on the cage system. This is the second lesson and we are going to be featuring the A shape in the first lesson we featured the C shape. Okay, so the A shape that we use is the regular open position campfire chord shape and we have open A and we're going to use our second finger to play second on the D. We're going to use our third finger to play second on the G. And then we're going to use our pinky to play second on the B. And then the E is going to be open the high E and we're going to get this sound. Now, as we discussed in the first lesson, we have two open strings here, which is going to be the A and the high E. Okay, so if we move this shape up, we're going to need to take care of that. Now the fingering doesn't necessarily change, but we do need to add a bar. So if we wanted to say, for example, do a D chord using this shape, we would bar our first finger across the fifth fret and we would have our root note here, which would be fifth on the A, and then we would have another root note, which would be seven on the G, and we would get this shape. Now my big fat fingers sometimes have a little bit of trouble playing that. And I very rarely use this shape. Uh, if I'm going to play, uh, you know, this chord in a rock fashion, I'll normally just bar my third or second finger, normally third, sometimes fourth, across these three notes, and I'll just mute this high E. But whichever way you want to do it is absolutely fine. Technically, this is the shape. So wherever this first finger resides will tell us which chord it is. So in other words, here, this is an E chord, but it's using the A shape. And that's the confusing part, but just get used to thinking it's the A shape, but ask yourself which chord you're playing. So in other words, if we're going to play a C chord using this, it will be a C chord playing the A shape. Okay, so we worked uh, in the key of A before because I know most of you guys, like myself, have probably played a fair amount of blues in the key of A. So if we move this shape a little bit, my fat fingers are not going to fit in here too well, but you can see the shape here. This is uh, an A chord using the A shape. And I will transpose it to a couple of other positions later just to show you how that works. So basically the shape will be 12 on the A, you'll have 14 on the D, 14 on the G, 14 on the B, and 12 on the high E. Okay, so I'm going to switch to my overdrive sound now. Um, so if we just play the notes, doesn't sound particularly musical or lead guitar-esque or blues-esque, but this is a great shape for certain licks. Now, each shape you will find as you learn them has, you know, really good things that lend themselves to the shape that work really well within the shape. And I'm going to show you one of my favorites for using this A shape. First of all, I will slide up from a B. I won't necessarily always be thinking B, I'll do it from anywhere, but let's say B in this case up to the C sharp. And then I'll play the high E. That gives me a great kind of gospely blues sound. Fun. And then what I'll do is I'll hit this minor third, which we know works in a blue blues, and then I'll resolve to this A. And I just love that sound. Now, if you watch the first lesson, you'll remember that we use this F sharp here and this G. Well, they appear also in this shape. Just think about the shape being here. And we have this F sharp that we can add. And we have this G that we can add. Now this, excuse the pun, really starts to take shape because now we get this kind of sound. So what I'm doing is sliding up to the third of the chord, being C sharp, playing the fifth, and then I'm bending this F sharp up a half step, letting it down and pulling off to the high E, and then 
doing a blues bend on this minor third, this C, and then resolving the lick to the A. And that's something I like to do, is to pivot off this C sharp, hit that E, and then hit that minor third bend. So very slowly. Now another thing I like to do in this position, instead of hitting that C sharp, is hitting this D. I really like that sound. So that really lends itself, you know, those type of licks just work beautifully around this position. And you notice there I bent the G uh, 15 high up a whole step. And I can't stress enough how often I would and how long I would just play these licks. I just love the sound of these type of licks. Um, I would just, you know, for ages and ages, hours and hours, just make up nice little phrases around these licks. And like I say, maybe not the best heavy metal vocabulary, but for blues and, um, you know, any kind of blues rock, this stuff is fantastic. Okay, so sitting very nicely underneath this A on the 14th fret G string is this G note on the 12th fret G. And now we come down and we have the E here. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, personally for me, until I go into kind of minor pentatonic territory, which I'll get into in a second, I will normally slip down into the C shape. And this is where the cage system really starts to sort of pay, you know, pay benefits because you're seeing this A shape here. And then I'm slipping down into this C shape. Still an A chord, but you can see how that's working. Okay, you can see how these two positions are working together. Now, before I discussed that the minor pentatonic position that kind of fits over that C shape is position three. In this case, it's position four. So here's the minor pentatonic. And obviously there's a lot of similarity of notes between um, the A shape and the minor pentatonic, but you can see how it really just starts to get some beautiful lines. And all I did there, I love these kind of chromatic ideas, I just went, uh, pulled off from G to E from 15 to 12, and then went 14, 13, 12. And then what I'll do is I'll go 15 on the B, and then go 12, 13, 14. Excuse me. Then normally play 12 high E, and then do a minor third bend on that C, and then resolve to the A. So we have this kind of idea. And, and this really starts to sound really nice in blues and, and blues rock, if it's major. Because in minor you can't use major, but in major you can use major and minor. So you're starting to see here, we've got the minor pentatonic. So, for example, if we wanted to move that somewhere else, let's say, for example, we wanted to move it to G, it'd be exactly the same thing. We're just looking at the C shape, starting on G. And then we 
looking at the A shape starting on G. And exactly the same lick wise. can really move that anywhere you want so uh, and what I love about this as well is if you if you kind of if you know these shapes pretty well and you get to kind of an odd key that you're maybe not so familiar with this stuff navigationally can be absolutely um, fantastic and also you'll start to see just I'll just give you one uh, little example that you can use um, if you add a sharp five in the uh, C shape, you start to get that augmented sound. And we'll get into the jazz stuff uh, a little bit more later on, but I'm still visualizing this shape. So there we have it. So far we've got the C shape and we've got the A shape. And uh, I think you'll agree you can get some really nice ideas from those two shapes alone. <laughs> 